I'll talk a little bit about female serial killers. Making up about 15% of serial killers, okay? Though we're using here really a definition of at least two murders, okay, rather than three. Um, now, there are some differences between male and female serial killers. Female serial killers typically begin killing later in life. Most male serial killers begin around 25, mid late 20s. For female serial killers, it's usually early 30s. They're more likely to kill people they know, whereas male serial killers are more likely to target strangers. The most common victim of female serial killers is their husband, okay, which is why the black widow type is the most common type, someone who kills for inheritance. They're unlikely to have a criminal history, unlike the male serial killers, remember, which is 50-50, right? 50% have some criminal conviction, 50% don't. And the female serial killers tend to be place specific. Unsurprising, because if they're mainly killing spouses, it's going to be in the household. But male serial killers are more likely to be geographically mobile, moving from site to site. When it comes to male serial killers, typically, the more geographically mobile they are, the further they kill from home, the more organized they are, okay? The closer to home they kill, the more disorganized they are on that dichotomy. And female serial killers, less likely to use violent means of death, okay? Male serial killers usually kill via stabbing, shooting, strangling. For female serial killers, poison is the most frequent um, means, okay? The most well-known example is Eileen Wernos, okay? Um, which the movie Monster is about. Also known the Florida, also known as the Florida Highway Killer. Um, she's an unusual female serial killer, okay, um, in that her motivation seems to be in part about power control over the victims, and also perhaps a hedonistic element to it. Remember, hedonistic lust is the most common motivation for male serial killers. It's a very, very infrequent motivation for female serial killers, okay? Now, homes and homes also have a model for female serial killers, just like they do have for males, based upon motivation. There's clear overlap, right? The visionary serial killer, like the male visionary, is that who is delusional, okay? Experiencing hallucinations, hearing things that aren't there, seeing things that aren't there. And this delusion is playing part of what's driving their killing. The second type is the comfort orientated serial killer or profit murderer. Okay, that would be the black widow, okay, who's killing for financial gain. So like I say, usually killing one's husband to get inheritance, but it could be some other relationship, right? So long as that's the goal. The first type is power seeking serial killers. Okay. In most forms, not very frequent amongst female serial killers. The main subtype here is the medical murderer. Okay. The angel of death, who you've probably seen in some TV shows and movies, right? Um, the nurse who enjoys this power over life and death, making the the victim more sick when they want the victim to be more sick, making the victim well if they want the victim to be more well, and then being responsible ultimately for the victim's death. Quite often tied to this is a hero complex. Jean Jones here in the US was a nurse who would put babies in a situation in which they were near death in hopes of being able to save them, because maybe that would give some boost to her ego, also give some attention, okay? But unfortunately, many times she was unsuccessful, and so she caused the death of those infants. There was a case only a few months ago in England. Um, I've forgotten her name, but it was a similar case. A nurse, quite a young nurse, um, found to be responsible for murdering a number of infants in her care. Um, the main theory over what 
was motivating her seems to be the attention that it was getting, that she was working in a place where there was lots of death and that was bringing about lots of attention on her with her colleagues and friends and so on. And then the fourth type is infrequent for female serial killers, but it's the hedonistic type who kills for sexual excitement or some other form of excitement, okay, that it's giving them a rush in some way or it's part of some sadistic sexual fantasy. So female serial killers are much more likely to have an accomplice than male serial killers. So this final type is the disciple serial killer. Okay, a female serial killer who's operating really under the influence of a male figure. So this would be like the Manson cult members, right? Um, who committed murders following Charles Manson. Okay. 